the Energizer Bunny. It just keeps going and going and going and going. It, it goes about 38 feet 8 inches. <laughs> Well, welcome to Haywood RV, everybody. Josh the RV Nerd here with our very first Heritage Glen travel trailer we've ever been able to get into our new RV lineup. And uh, doesn't disappoint. This thing, it's its large. We are not in half ton country over here. It's just about 9,200 pounds dry weight. It is long, tip to tail, 38 feet, 8 inches. So you're definitely in a three quarter ton and up range on this. Or give us a call. Maybe you don't even have a tow vehicle. We can deliver this and park it at a destination for you. You don't even have to ever hitch up to this thing. We can get hitched without you getting hitched up. How about that? <laughs> um, this is a very similar floor plan to something that we actually carry in the Keystone Cougar, but they did a couple things significantly differently, and that's what I like about having so many options at Halo RV. Like, maybe you like a floor plan, but you want a couple things a little different. Like, this one, uh, it has all the windows on the door side, just like that similar Cougar I mentioned, but it has a bigger camp kitchen at the expense of having three bunks in the bunk room instead of four, but, this is a, we'll say triple bed bunkhouse that can still sleep for people back there. And you'll see what I mean when we get back there. This thing is crafty, it is cool, it is versatile, it is flexible. It could be an office, it doesn't have to be a bunkhouse. This could be a lot of different things. It also has a flip-flop living room in comparison to that Cougar. And if I'm being real with you, I, I like I like Cougars. I am sweet on Cougars. <laughs> that was not intended to be a pun. Um, I think I prefer the layout of this living room. I don't normally say things like that. I like how this one's put together. Now, as I said, this layout is like kind of flip flop, crisscross applesauce, the opposite of what I'm used to seeing. So I'm really at a loss of like kind of how to go about this one. So I think what I'm going to kind of do is I'm going to start by just giving you a nice, smooth, slow look at everything here. And we're going to start with like the living room and entertainment and just sort of work our way around from there, kind of zone by zone, section by section. And notice, there's the entry door over there. This giant super slide, all these windows, like a fifth wheel, basically, they're over here on the door side of the RV. But if you notice on the left hand side of the screen, I've partially got one rolled down. You've got like blackout roller shades on this on tinted windows. So if you really want to get the sun out of this thing, you can. And if I get up close a little bit and get the sun pollution out of it, let the camera just kind of focus on the couch. You get a little better idea of what that looks like. It's everything in this is just a very smooth, buttery kind of feel to it. But again, it's the entertainment over here that really impresses me. I really, I like this because let me put you in the driver's seat. We come over here. We sit down right in front of this little 32 inch Greystone 5000 BTU electric space heat and Tootsie toaster right there. And notice how we have side mounted vents. This is a ventless flooring system. I mean, you can kick your feet up, you can keep warm, and uh, you're just, you are all up in the game day bucket go boom entertainment center over here. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, pretty awesome. Plus, I love that little charger shelf entry shelf that you have right there just little details like that are cool now i always try to be fair there's a couple little things on this that if i had my way i'd see a little different but i don't have my way i just get to represent it how it is like there's no window in the entry door i would like a window in the entry door but all that wall is doing is staring at the bathroom and with all of the windows over here on the door side if i want to see if it's bob or carol or ted or alice knocking on my door it ain't exactly difficult for me to check all that out uh you know now this theater seat right here, it is a wall hugger. Both sides recline. Um, it is not cuddle compliant. It's not a cuddling chair. It's a uh, you over there, me over here kind of chair. But if you're noticing, look at those armrests. It is made for two fist in it on a Friday night, brother. You can have a Coors Light and a Miller Light or whatever you drink. You get the idea. One in each hand uh, on each side, as it were. <laughs> All these windows open for airflow too, the, the backs and the slide sides. You'll also notice all of the uh, countertops on this are sealed edge press membrane. So after you had a couple of them cold curves lats, if you do happen to spill something, obviously you don't want to just leave it there, but it's not going to cause liquid to get inside of the, uh, the countertop material and swell up. And it's, it's different. Like, I, I think they just kind of had a leftover little corner, but I like what they did here. We're going to open this all up in a minute. But this open shelf right here with more outlets, 
Is it just me or is that like begging for a little coffee maker or something? Like what would you put in there? Leave me a comment. Let me know. I always love knowing how people move in, frankly, honestly, because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get ideas for how I would move into one of these. <laughs> and I have found that there's people out there with much better ideas than me. Now, there's little accent lights under the base of the island right there, which is a perfect little night uh, nightlight kind of lower track lighting. It's it's just a white. It's not blue. It's uh, not going to bother people's potential sleep patterns or whatnot. You see how there's some outlets on here? Over around the corner, we have ourselves a 12 volt DC compressor fridge. That would be a 10.7 cubic foot model, which I think is a very good size for something like this. Um, the uh, total counter space in this is also pretty awesome. I mean, there's some really good prep area capacity in here with, again, some very handy outlet locations. And I just, I just like this. I like how atypical this is. I like the like the microwave just kind of hangs out there, but it looks nice because they trimmed it out. I love that big kitchen window while still maintaining a vent hood above. Usually, I swear, when you're in a kitchen slide in a trailer, you either get this tiny good for nothing window that often doesn't even open for airflow, or you get a vent hood. They're giving us both a vent hood and a big window here. It means it doesn't have a cabinet over top, but when we start opening everything up, you are going to see that if there's one thing this is short on, uh, it's not storage space. To begin with, how big is the pantry? Um, it's literally big enough for a grown man to play hide and seek inside that thing. <laughs> so giving you a better, more three-dimensional view of it here, uh, <laughs> it's kind of wild to me. This thing is so big, they actually included in it its own, like, just skylight window. It doesn't need to open for airflow because there's, you know, nothing else in here, but I mean... This is crazy. This is great. Those hangers right there, there's plenty of room for like broom hangers below. You can literally walk in here and you can easily reach the back of those shelves because they didn't make them too deep. If I'm being picky, the slide floor down here just sticks out a little bit much, which I'm sure that there's an engineering reason for it. And the door doesn't like fully open as flush as I would like to see it. Frankly, I think what I would do is I would probably shave that door, uh, the bottom of it up a little bit if possible and uh, make for some easier access for myself. But then we start getting into the actual like kitchen slide. I mean, you just see big drawers, like the bottom two drawers are extra large if you notice in comparison to that top drawer. So you probably got one for utensils, one for, I don't know, like a junk drawer, one for spatulas. And then because this is just counter space with nothing below it, they had the opportunity to make it just storage space. And I love that they didn't just leave it wide open which would be not as useful. They added a shelf in there and they doubled its function. It just feels so much better. Now these uh, compressor fridges that we're looking at, it's the same height and width as an eight cubic foot gas electric two-way. What it is, is deeper. That's where the extra storage capacity comes from. Now I told you we get our little coffee bar open or whatever you want to call it over here. Once again, throwing a shelf in a cabinet where you know what? If it wasn't there, the, the average shopper wouldn't even think twice about it. But people who actually go camping, people who have RV'd before, that's the stuff I look for. And that's where I go, I think this might have been designed and developed by somebody who actually camps themselves, you know? And you might say, yeah, but remember that big space in the kitchen slide? If that was wide open, it could be a trash can space. I agree. Or at least I would if it weren't for the fact that they already included one for us over here in the island. But what I like about this, this is an awesome living room. So much so, you might have forgot, we're in a bunkhouse camper right now. Maybe you didn't, I don't know. But I think because it's all cleaned up so nice, it's tucked away so nice, there's such a clarity and definition, it almost feels like private bedrooms, not just a bunkhouse. And this is kind of spoiling something I was going to showcase for you later. And by the way, I just... Versabunk, amazing versatility. That is like the Department of Redundancy Department, I, I think. But anyway, what I like about this, it's just a real door, but it totally opens out of the way. It it's not in your way at all. If you want to leave this open, where you want to be able to kind of keep an eye on the kids back there or something like that, you know, it just, it, it, it feel, of course, not when the door automatically closes on me, but the RV is not level right now and I don't have a shoe blocking it, which maybe I should. So first of all, over here, we have what I like to call a big kid bunk. If you notice, it's a little bit wider. And check out how you have the same roller blackout shades in here that you had in the living room. 
and sometimes it doesn't have to be fancy, but that little pull handle just giving you something to climb up. And this is what's interesting. Both sides of this, the shelving is reinforced. The shelving is a ladder because frankly, kids will just climb on anything, right? <laughs> so why not embrace it? Why not make it so that they can do that? If you feel like it, this could, uh, there's entertainment hookups in there. This could be a little entertainment station. There's household and USB plugs over here on the right hand side in those cabinets. Little dresser drawer for socks and undies down below. And notice how the window is still open for airflow in here. This room also doesn't really feel too small. One, because the windows, two, because the lighting, but three, because of this nice big vaulted ceiling that we have over here. Now, as we spin our way around, a lot of bunk models do this or something like it where you have that flip up overhead bunk and then some kind of like sofa below. But that's where this is called the Versa bunk thing or Versa bed or whatever it's called. If you notice, this is all in a slide out. So it has just, I mean, this is a huge, huge open space right here. And of course, if need be, you can fold that all down into a sleeper, but it's that lower Versa queen bed that uh, makes this thing work so well because that opens up into a 60 by 74 camp queen. So that is something that not just kids, but even big adults can sleep on. And that is how I think that this is a triple bed bunkhouse that could realistically sleep four people. But that's not all it can do. Because that's not screwed down to the floor or anything, it allows for some extreme, well, as the poster said, versatility. <laughs> or you could say, namaste, in here and do some RV yoga. Like you can do one of these little whoosh, kind of looking up to the sky maneuvers. Uh, 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 my back locked up. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. And uh, when you're not doing RV yoga, you've got a wide open space in here that you could use for pet kennels or you could easily convert this into an office like a chiropractic office. And I could be your first customer, please. And you know what else that could be really good for? A pack and play. You could get that thing totally out of there and that could just be a little pack and play space. I mean, that's what's kind of cool. This is an RV that could grow with your family. Its use could change as your family changes and grows and you wouldn't have to trade out of this thing. And when I say, I want to help you get your second camper the first time, that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about right there. Let's find you, you know, a lot of people who are financing these things, you could theoretically finance this RV for 10, 12, even potentially up to 15 years. Well, do you want to pay 15 years on a camper that's only going to fit your family for two years? No, it doesn't make sense, right? That's what I'm trying to help you find. Let's help you find the second camper the first time. Now, in here, our bathroom, if there's one thing I think is amiss on this bathroom, it's the location of that toilet paper holder. And it's tricky for a manufacturer because no matter where they put it, someone's going to tell them it's in the wrong spot. But, I mean, I'm a tall guy with long arms, and that's uh, an inspector gadget stretch Armstrong reach for me. Although, look at this. There's some awesome, not just leg room here, but elbow and shoulder room. That's a big, fluffy, friendly bathroom. And sometimes it's the little details, like just around the corner here, just like we saw in the kitchen, just a couple places to hang a couple towels. It doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be effective. That is a 30 by 36 inch rectangular shower. And with the vaulted ceiling and skylight, super friendly for people my height. Then when we get over here, you see that is a fully uh, mirrored, uh, well, a well, medicine cabinet with a mirror, mirrored medicine cabinet, whatever you want to call it. But then you see this other door beside it over there. Well, in a sense, it's kind of just a second medicine cabinet. Uh, and what's behind that wall? Because you're looking at it thinking, well, that could have been deeper. Just wait till we get around the corner. Which leads us into the bedroom, but not to see the thing yet that I just alluded to. Pardon me just a moment. I saw something <laughs> shiny. We have a plywood easy lift bed base with a storage trunk down below. And it's actually interesting. It's like a two tier storage trunk. And I'm going to move slow so you don't feel uh, motion sick if you're sensitive to things like that. My mother is uh, incredibly sensitive to motion. And as I've gotten older, it's really started affecting me. So I've tried to be more cognizant of moving the camera slowly, which is fine. It just gives me more reason to talk and fill the air. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, that is a 60 by 80 true queen bed. And I've mentioned a few times a very similar cougar floor plan. 
That's a 70 by 80 king standard with no queen option. This is a queen bed with no king option. It's just a nice little dividing line between the two. And I love the fact that we get to have one of each at Halid RV. Now, both side stands have, uh, you know, full length hanging closets. They're mirrored. You have your individual dresser drawers below. But did you notice that handy little cutout right there? Kind of tapping into what Stick and Tin Wildwood has done. It's They call it a little CPAP storage pocket because look at this. Look at where your outlets are located. If you are a CPAP user, frankly, even just using it for a phone charger, it's right up next to your head. So you don't have to stretch hoses and cables and everything else all over the bed so that it looks like, you know, you're uh, hooked up to all the different Darth Vader breathing machines in an operating room. But wait, there's more. Flip it around the other direction here. If you're laying in bed, this is what you're going to look at. And frankly, guys, any time a manufacturer gives me that like giant bonus closet over here in the corner of the bedroom, I'm just like, shut up and take my money. I Man, that just works for me. It works so well because they give me the storage space of a slide out with, without, you know, the weight and the cost of a slide out. However, other than the bedroom, the closet, and the bathroom, uh... <laughs> We don't really have any road mode access on this one. Every RV has one little Achilles heel, and that's this one. It is an awesome model, but it's definitely a destination camper. Oh, yeah. Remember that big closet over here in the bedroom? Uh, you, th you think I would remember to point out potentially game-changing really big features for people, right? Like make-it-or-break-it deal features? <laughs> no, not Uncle Josh. I forget, and then I have to come out here a day later and splice footage together because I am a dingbat. That's your Uncle Josh, the, the RV nerd. What I'm getting at is this is washer-dryer prepped. Oop, hold on. There we go. This is washer-dryer prepped. Um, that is big enough. As long as you take that shelf and that rod out, I don't see why it couldn't be stackable capable even. And there's just something about the face of this thing. It's just like, hello there. Like, I don't know. It's got a cool shape, a cool character. That is a gigantic windshield. Oh my lord. Now, big windshield. Sounds and feels like more opportunities for a rock to hit that thing, right? Certainly, greater square footage does allow for that. Is it impossible to have happen? No, but it is not very common. And let me run you through a little mental exercise on that note right there. So think of your vehicle. You drive it every single day, probably multiple times a day, right? How many times do you have rocks hit your windshield of your vehicle? Now consider the fact that your RV is not on the road near as often as your vehicle, and consider that the RV has your vehicle literally acting as a, 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 a linebacker in front of it, blocking all of that stuff, you know? It's got its own offensive line in the form of your truck. Well, it's not impossible. But man, it is hard for a stone to hit that thing. And that is an automotive grade windshield, not a common glass window like you see in the sidewalls. You can actually tap on them with your keys and you can literally hear the difference. Under that bed, you have yourself a large pass-through on this sucker and some very cool features on this thing. Like the slam latches, the, uh, the magnet hold decks, those are pretty common. You do have four corner power stabilizer jacks. You can just see one of those hanging down. And if we stop here for a second, the front power running, because it is split power runnings, which I think is something they did well here. Right down here in the middle of it, you actually have your pet leash latch. So if you want to keep your little four-legged furry friend outside with you during the day, you can do so without leaving them to fry in the sun <laughs> and uh, <laughs> turning them into a hot dog. <laughs> hot dog, get it. Oh, I'll see myself out, sorry. We have Max Breeze airflow windows here. And uh, again, dual power awnings giving us maximum shaded patio coverage, which is cool. Now, as we uh, get a little further back here, this has an awesome outside camp kitchen. First of all, you've already got the two awnings. Secondly, this outside camp kitchen door is extremely tall. And I'm gonna flip the camera around on you just to give you a reference point here. I'm not ducking, I can do an ET phone home stretch. I mean, there's so much room above my head, uh, my hand doesn't even stay in frame. I'm not going to jump to see if I can hit it because I did that and I found out I can actually jump higher than I thought uh, I was capable of doing and I just about gave myself a concussion. 
Um, but ever since the doctor dropped me uh, when I was born, it just hasn't affected me the same way, you know. Uh, the uh, <laughs> camp kitchen here is what I think anyone would refer to as the big camp kitchen as opposed to the small camp kitchen. We've got uh, some things they did right here, though. Like, we've got this cool slide-out griddle station, and I like the angle of it. It just, I don't know, it seems more functional, it makes more sense to me. This is all galvanized rolled steel, and I love that elevated little platform right there. Uh, you got the uh, Barley Poppinator number uh, 37 over there on the wall, household USB plugs, a real sink with a real drain. And notice how that sink and the fridge are lowered downward a little bit. There's a level change right there. The reason I like that is because that means that sink and that fridge are easier to get to for people who aren't as tall as me. Uh, the, the gravity friendlies, the, the littles, they're going to appreciate that. On the back wall here, next to the ladder, uh, we have an uh, outside utility shower. And then the, the black square below that, that's actually all of our water hookups, including a black tank flush. Now, speaking of ladder... Let's take a peek upstairs. Now up here on the roof, a couple things. Obviously it's walkable. I'm trouncing all over this thing. Back here by the ladder. Uh, nope, hold on back. There we go, back here by the ladder. I'm telling you, man, the weatherman, this, this, he makes it look easy. I've learned that this stuff is hard. Um, there's a little solar prep plug. They do have a factory solar package. It's fairly basic. It's a solid like 100 watt battery tender. It's not the kind of thing that's gonna let you run the air conditioner off grid or anything like that. But frankly, for that kind of power, you're gonna have to do some upfitting on almost any RV that there is out there with very, very few exceptions. Um, but uh, what I want to point out is how all of the roof fixtures are, are white. And I'm sorry, I can't keep the camera pointed at the, uh, the roof like that. I'm staring straight at the sun when I do it. The, the roof fixtures are white. And uh, what I like about that is, especially like the air conditioner, it's not getting heated from the sun before it tries to pump the cold air into your RV. It's just, it's a simpler, and I, I think a little more efficient, effective system. I don't think a black AC shroud on an air conditioner is going to cause it to not be able to keep up. I think it's gonna cause it to work harder and to basically burn a candle at both ends a little more aggressively. This just, this just seems smarter, more effective, easier. Now, of course, we're backup camera ready, but I mean, really guys, at this point, what isn't? And frankly, an RV that doesn't actually have an object that I can point to says, look, it's a backup camera prep mount. You can still put a backup camera on it. There's adapter mounts that go on those things. Oh, here's, this is, I think, a really important feature on this trailer, because this thing is long, it's strong, it's down to get the camping on. It's 38 feet, eight inches, tip two, tail tongue two, bumper. Wide stance stability axles. They're, they're not gonna magically make this thing, that's not gonna be the make or break difference between towing comfortably and towing uncomfortably. What that's going to do though is supplement a proper weight distributing anti-sway hitch, and it'll help make this thing tow a lot nicer. It'll wiggle and sway less. And I will tell you too, this is something people don't talk about very much. The longer your vehicle's wheelbase, the happier it's going to be towing this big beauty right here. You don't. People don't think about that. And, and maybe you have no idea what I'm talking about. Hold on. Okay, so science nerd content coming in. Some basic Archimedes principles, all right? Um, if you want to move a rock and you go to just grab it, you it's, it's hard, it's heavy. A rock is big, right? So if you get a really long uh, staff and you put a small rock in there as a prop, you can wedge it and you can torque and you can lift and move that big rock, right? Uh, well... In this example, your vehicle is the rock that's trying to be moved, and the trailer is the staff you're using to move it. The longer the trailer, the easier it is to shift the vehicle around. Because think of it, if, you're, if the trailer and the truck are going straight, and the trailer shifts six degrees on axis, if it's a longer trailer, that represents a wider arc than a shorter trailer, which has a shorter arc with the same six degree variance on the, on the turn axis. And I, I told you, this is nerd science content. So what I'm getting at here is a heavy duty anti-sway hitch and of course a appropriate tow vehicle that can handle something of this size. I don't like half tons paired up with this thing. Now, this is brand new to our lineup. I really, really welcome any and all feedback you're willing to offer. Uh, let me know what you like. Let me know what you dislike. Let me know what you like to see different. Um, any questions you might have. And again, I mentioned we have a similar Cougar. I'll leave you a link for that in the video description where you can check that out. You can always check out pricing and availability on this guy via the link in the video description at any time, whether you're curious or whether you're serious. Remember, we don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So when you're ready, we're ready.
So take care, stay safe, have fun. Remember to subscribe, everyone. Bye.